Ceremony at St. George's Hall in the Kremlin. Russian President Vladimir Putin has announced the annexation of four Ukrainian territories. Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson. Putin's latest move has escalated the seven-month war, taking it to an unpredictable new phase. In his speech, Putin said the decision made by people in these four regions must be respected and said that they would be citizens of Russia forever. Putin vowed to protect the annexed regions. The Russian president even repeated claims that Ukraine belongs to Russia. He asked Kiev to end all its military operations and return to the negotiating table. You will know that in the People's Republics of Donetsk and Luhansk, and in the regions of Zaporozhia and Kherson, referendums were held. The results of these referendums were clear. The people have made their choice. It's a clear choice. Today, we will sign the agreement for People's Republic of Donetsk, the People's Republic of Luhansk, and the region of Zaporozhia, along with the region of Kherson, to become a part of Russia. I believe that there will be federal and constitutional support for the four new regions to become part of the Russian Federation, and that is because this is the will of millions of people. Attacking the West, Putin said the US and its allies are merely looking for ways to break up his country by supporting Ukraine in its fight. He says the West is trying to bring Russia to its knees since the fall of the Soviet Union. The Russian president announced the annexation of four areas of Ukraine, which make up almost a fifth of Ukraine's territory. The ceremony comes three days after Russian-backed authorities held a so-called referendum in the four regions. Kiev has described the ceremony as a Kremlin freak show. Ukraine and the West says that voting for the referendums were held under gunpoint and were bogus, illegal and a sham. They've pledged not to recognise the results. Meanwhile, on the ground, Russia continues with its offensive. In Zaporizhia, a Russian missile strike killed at least 23 people and left dozens injured. The missiles hit a convoy of vehicles on the outskirts of the southern Ukrainian city. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Rosie Burchard, who's live for us in Brussels. Uh, Rosie, the EU has been meeting on all of this. What's been the response so far? Well, Nick, this comes as a surprise to no one in Brussels. Most here say this is a page straight out of the Russian playbook, but that has not stopped leaders of the European Union from reacting with dismay to this news. Now, they have released a statement in which they say, we do not and will never recognise the illegal so-called referenda that Russia has engineered as a pretext for this further violation of Ukraine's independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity, nor their fa falsified and illegal results. So that's just a taste of the kind of language EU leaders are using when it comes to their reaction to these, this news of annexation. But they've gone further still. The European Commission, which is headquartered right in this building behind me, has put forward new proposals for sanctions against Russia in, uh, precisely in response to the news of these referendums taking place or these so-called referendums taking place. Those new sanctions include a ban on EU citizens from sitting on the boards or governing bodies of Russian state-owned companies and tightening existing export bans on goods and products that travel from the European Union toward Russia. And the goal there really is to try and prevent Russia from uh, further modernizing its weapons. So trying to tighten the screws on the one hand and the Kremlin's ability to keep financing its war in Ukraine and also to try and reduce Russia's capacities on the battlefield. Now, none of those sanctions are particularly contentious, but there is a disagreement among EU members overall on how to proceed when it comes to this policy of sanctioning Russia. Remember the EU has imposed successive rounds of sanctions on Moscow since the invasion of Ukraine. Some EU leaders, for example, Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kallas, would like to see sanctions go much further still. She wants a full price cap on Russian oil and gas. Meanwhile, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban is sceptical of the whole policy of sanctions and says they are not working. Sanctions need the unanimous backing of all 27 EU leaders to move forward, so there will still be plenty of debate to be had among these leaders in the European Union, despite this unity presented today with this statement criticizing heavily Russia's latest actions.
And Rosie, the EU has also just announced new guidelines on Russians entering the bloc. More, what more do we know about that? I just left a press conference where EU Home Affairs Commissioner Ilva Johansson announced and asked member states to really clamp down on the issuance of visas for Russians. Now, she said this comes within an overall context of Russia escalating this war and therefore escalating, she said, the security threat which is posed to the European Union. She referenced Russia making threats of use of nuclear weapons. She also mentioned the fact that Russia has now partially mobilized part of its citizens to fight in Ukraine and to bolster those uh, to bolster its force on the battlefield. And beyond that, she also mentioned some, what she said is there have been cases of Russian citizens entering the European Union as tourists in order to either provoke Ukrainian refugees or spread propaganda for Vladimir Putin. Now, within that context, the European Commission, the bloc's executive, is asking member states to make more thorough border checks to reassess existing visas and to turn down any visa requests should they suspect that anyone intent from Russia intends to stay more than the, existing, the, than the 90 days that their visa may allow. Now, I should say it's already pretty difficult for Russians to enter the European Union for several reasons. There is a ban on Russian flights entering EU airspace as part of sanctions. Beyond that, there is also the what was a visa facilitation scheme which gave Russians privileged access to the EU has been totally suspended. And beyond that, the countries which share land borders with Russia are seriously restricting entry, particularly to tourists. So there are few conditions on which Russians can still enter the EU. The European Commission now asking member states to clamp down on that further Though Ilva Johansson said that Russians still have the right to apply for asylum in the bloc, bloc and that these new recommendations do not affect that right to asylum, although, that, of course, that is impacted by these different travel bans uh, on entry into the European Union through the land borders or those flight bans, which will make it more difficult, in some would say, to, for, to apply for asylum. But the Commissioner h highlighting and insisting that Russians still have the right to apply for asylum in the EU should they wish to. Rosie, thank you. That was Rosie Butcher joining us live from Brussels.